and welcome back to the BCR Dawson Sub. This update will cover work undertaken during February of 2023. It has been another very productive month, so let's get started. I am continuing to test on the new trackage for the Fort St. John subdivision. This train left siding 1 at Septimus and is seen heading south towards Bond and Chetwind after passing through the wall. This new trackage continues to perform very well, and I'm now confident that it can become hidden trackage once the Pine River section is installed in front of it. I have heard from many fellow layout owners that any hidden trackage must be accessible, so we cut two openings in the Pine River backdrop for access hatches. This was done with a jigsaw. After cutting out the openings, they were dressed using a rasp and a file. New panels will be cut to fit into these openings and painted to match the backdrop. The Pine River section was then lifted onto its brackets for a test fit up against the shelf for the Fort St. John subdivision. This was done to ensure that it would fit in front of the shelf and that the hatches would provide suitable access to the hidden trackage. This close-up view of the openings shows the access for the hidden trackage, and I can reach all of it through these openings. The next layout section to be worked on is the Sundance Bond section. This requires a fair bit of work prior to installation. The Fort St. John subdivision is at the rear, which includes the original location for Septimus. This will be taken up and relayed as Bond siding. In front is Sundance siding on the Dawson Creek subdivision, which will also need to be taken up and relayed. This layout section will need to be shortened at its left end by approximately 23 inches due to the narrower width of the new layout room. After the cut, a new left end sill will have to be fabricated and installed. Track lifting on the Fort St. John subdivision began south of Septimus, I used a boning knife to lift the track and the track bed. I cut the feeder wires immediately below the track so that I could connect the new feeders without disturbing the track bus wires. This photograph shows the first section of track south of Septimus after lifting. I did not glue the turnouts down when I installed them originally, so after releasing the frog feeder wire, they came up with these, and this has enabled them to be reused. All of the turnout control components, the servos, the singlets, the frog juicers, and the brackets were removed from underneath the layout, and these were saved for reuse. This view shows the layout section after lifting the former trackage for Septimus. A short section was left in place at the right end to ensure a good connection with the Fort St. John subdivision trackage on the adjoining Highway 97 section. This is the section which had Sundance toward the front and Septimus towards the rear. I've just finished lifting the track for Septimus and also the track bed. If we come in here, you can see there's a line across the benchwork, and that's the approximate location of where it will need to be cut to fit into the new location. So we've lifted the track all the way through here. It wasn't going to be possible to lift it up um, in pieces, so I've just taken up the whole thing back to this little section of track here. And that little section of track is going to connect to the new trackage for the Fort St. John subdivision, which you have seen in earlier videos. It's going to connect with the uh, Highway 97 section. So I've left that there to ensure a good joint with the track. And then we're going to be relaying track from there forward. And this will now become bond siding on the Fort St. John subdivision. And once that's done, then we'll turn our attention to Sundance on the Dawson Creek subdivision at front. And this will be removed and replaced. Well, tearing up track and row bed is not as depressing when you can put it back fairly quickly. Here is the new track bed for the Fort St. John subdivision, including bond siding, which is in place only a few days later. And here is the new trackage for the Fort St. John subdivision looking north. The section south of bond will be laid after installation of this layout section, and that's so that I can ensure a good connection with the curve into Chetwin Yard, which is on the adjoining section. And this is the view looking south. 
Bond siding is approximately 44 inches long, which is a respectable length. That's long enough for a work train or a short freight in the event of a meet. This is the Sundance Bond section. We have Sundance out front. This is on the Dawson Creek subdivision. This has yet to be taken up and relayed. And at the rear, where we used to have Septimus siding, we now have Bond siding on the Fort St. John subdivision. So the tracks will come south from the Highway 97 section onto this section. Here's the north switch for Bond siding. Here's the main track and the siding extending along this section and then down to the south switch at the far end. The siding is about 44 inches long, which is good for about nine or 10 cars. After the south switch, the track will start to curve to the left and it will then curve into Chetwin Yard. Here we see the underside of the Sundance Bond section with all of the wiring underneath. The new feeder wires have been connected to the track bus. So by cutting the feeders as close as possible to the track that was removed, I have enough length of the feeders that are attached to the track bus to enable the new feeders to be connected without disturbing the track bus. And that has saved a lot of time in not having to relay that. And this is another view. The wiring with the green tags is for the turnout control components, and these will be installed at a later date. This is the wiring underneath the Sundance Bond section. The wiring with the green tags was for the two turnouts at the north end of Septimus. We're going to repurpose the main track switch for Bond. The second one will not go back in. Here you can see the feeders for Bond being tied into the track bus for this section of track, which is running along here. And all along here I have the feeders for Bond main track and Bond siding tied into the bus. And we come down to the south switch at Bond. Here's the frog feeder for that uh, switch. And there's the hole for the turnout throw wire. That turnout hardware will probably go in fairly soon while this bench work is on its side. It's much easier to do that now than crawling around under the layout once the section's reinstalled. So there we go. Bond is wired up and I think we're ready for a test run. Here's our test run through Bond with RS3 number 573 in analog mode for testing. This is just to make sure that the wiring has been done correctly and that there are no shorts. After running through the main track, we'll go back through the siding and make sure that's working as well. Turning now to the trackage for Sundance on the Dawson Creek subdivision, I decided to lift all of the trackage due to damage at both ends and also a desire to make some changes to the alignment and track arrangement. The same procedure was used to lift the track for Sundance. Here we see the main track and siding track at Sundance being lifted after the west switch has been removed. And this is the Sundance section after lifting all the track. This view is looking north or east. And this view is looking south or west toward Chetwind. Here is the Sundance Bond section after lifting of track for Sundance out in front. I had to lift the entire thing because it was damaged at either end. I'm also interested in seeing if I can remove these S-curves at either end, which might give me back some siding length after we make the cut. I'm also interested in seeing if we can put in the gravel spur here, which was at Sundance, that would provide some additional operation with ballast trains coming in to load up and then go out again and using the siding for runaround moves. So I'm going to begin laying track at this end. This alignment mates with the uh, Highway 97 section and from here I will lay track uh, south towards Chetwind. I will stop at the south switch and then leave the rest until this section is installed so that I can align the track to join up with the track coming out of uh, Chetwind on the Dawson Creek subdivision. So now it's time to start laying some track again. This is a test arrangement for the new alignment through Sundance. Most of the sub roadbed and track components were recycled from the previous version, which has saved me some time. 
As an example, the curvature and the ramp down into the lower elevation of the siding at either end, and also the curve out of the west switch toward Chetwind. All of these were reused and have saved me some time. A major change is the decision to include the gravel pit track at Sundance, which requires an additional turnout east of the siding switch. The gravel pit spur will curve out toward the front of the layout and then drop in elevation down into a depression. So here you can see the sub road bed in place after it's been manufactured. And again, most of this was recycled from previous uh, components. This will add some operational interest in this area with being able to bring in ballast hoppers spot them in the spur for loading, run around them, and then go somewhere else with the work train. Here we see the completed trackage for Bond at left and the new trackage for Sundance at right. The uh, west switch is in the foreground and then the main and siding tracks and then the east track further down the way and then the turnout for the gravel spur. You can also see that I've excavated the depression for the gravel spur. Uh, that's not finished yet. And once that's done, then I can lay the pit track down into that uh, depression. Here is the new trackage for Sundance as it stands at month end. Uh, this is the sub road bed for the section of track which will connect to the uh, curve into Chetwin Yard. That'll go down once this layout section is in place permanently and I can align the track to the adjoining section. This is the west switch for Sundance siding, the main track and siding. I've excavated for the ballast pit, which is an addition. This is going to create some additional operational interest. Here we have the east switch for the siding, and then the turnout for the gravel pit spur. That's going to come down this ramp and down into the gravel pit. So I have to lay that. Uh, the section of track to the east of here will also be laid once this layout section is in place permanently. My next step is to finish off this uh, gravel pit spur then get this track tied into the track bus and tested. So that'll be in the weeks to come. To cap off the month of February, five more layout sections were installed in place. The first of these was the Pine River section. This is the largest and heaviest section of the layout. It's eight feet long and it widens to 28 inches where it adjoins the helix. Here we're reattaching the support leg at the front corner. This section had already undergone a test fit, so installation went quite smoothly. The photograph shows the Pine River section installed and secured in place on its brackets next to the Highway 97 section. The two sections for Tremblay measure five feet each in length. Prior to installation, we bolted them together on the floor and then we resecured the LED light bars spanning the joint. This work was easier to do on the floor rather than underneath the sections once they were in place on the brackets. After placing all of the layout sections on their brackets and ensuring they are level, we secure them to the brackets with screws. The brackets already have a hole in them and you can see the screw going through the bracket and into the underside of the bench work. Here we're securing the tremblay sections after their installation. And here are the tremblay sections in place above the Highway 97 and Pine River sections. The two lighting canopy sections above tremblay were also joined together on the floor prior to installation. And once again, we made the LED light connections while it was upside down on the floor. And here are those lighting canopies in place above tremblay. This overall view of the layout room shows the bench work for Chetwind and Dawson Creek on the left and the recently installed bench work along the north wall at right. The Sundance bond section is sitting on sawhorses while I work on revising the track and the wiring. So it's been another month of significant progress. During March we will be working to get the helix installed and the section for Sundance and bond cut and fitted. I would like to thank my friends Michael and John who have been attending work sessions and helping with various aspects of the work. Uh, these, some of these layout sections are fairly large and heavy and it's much easier when we have three people to be lifting them into place and uh, holding things and so on. Thank you for watching and I hope to be back with another update next month. Until then, peace be with you.